Hi everyone, welcome to Hoop Club. And this isn't, we haven't numbered this box. I think it's probably box. I actually can't remember. But anyway, this is our first quarterly box. This is the spring box or the February box. Um, and I am excited to bring you this box. Although I have just realized that there's a mistake and that we haven't sent you out enough brown thread. So the bird is stitched with um, brown thread. It's DMC 680. I'm so sorry. I can't believe I've done that. I don't know how I've made that mistake. So it's this kind of brown color. So the girls are just packing up a whole new set of threads to send out to you. So you should get it in the next couple of days, but I'm really sorry if you've started stitching and then run out of thread. Um, yes, that shouldn't happen. I don't know how it's happened, but it's happened. So I'm really sorry. So I'm just gonna go through the box with you and we'll do, we'll go through all the different stitches um, and we'll start right from the very beginning. So if you're a new Hoop Club subscriber or if this is your first embroidery project, we'll start right from the beginning so you know just all the basics. But I'm just gonna talk you through the box and what is in your box. So these are our lovely new boxes bit thicker so we can get more in them and they are we're able to put them straight in the post so we don't have to put them in a bag so it's better for the environment um, and all round just better so we've got our hoop club magazine which if you're a previous subscriber you should notice is much thicker we have put so much more stuff in there for you there's a free friendship bracelet pattern that was shared on our blog but you have that there for free and just some other little bits around the free gifts that are in the box and then there's this alphabet cross stitch alphabet which i will also go through for you in a separate video and then we've got a bit about our designer laurie so that's your magazine then you've got obviously your fabric and your hoop and back and wadding and needle and then you've got your thread. There is more of this coming. And then this month we have included these gorgeous strawberry seeds for you to plant. Um, and hopefully get some strawberries, but how gorgeous is the packaging? And then also this washi tape, so I'm getting a washi tape as well, which we just loved. So that's what's in your box. And I am now going to show you how to start your project. So the first thing you need to do is get your fabric in your hoop. So unscrew the hoop and then place it over the design. Just try and get it as central as you can and then push it over the bottom hoop. So any creases you should be able to tighten out of the fabric. So you just want to very gradually tighten the, the hoop and then tug the fabric but not too much so that you're warping or distorting the shape of the design but you do want this to be nice and tight to stitch onto so just keep slightly tugging it is quite hard <laughs> i'll have to admit tightening those hoops um and then pulling the fabric until you're happy that it's really nice and tight and Actually, you can keep, as you're stitching the project, it will get loose again. So just keep giving it a little tighten as you go along all the way through your project. So now we're going to split our embroidery thread. So embroidery thread always comes in these thick strands and then you either use the six strands that it's made up of or you split it down to give yourself a, a finer line. And for this project, we're using three strands. So I'm just gonna pull so there are six in total, so you just pull three away from each other. And then if you go slowly, pulling it apart should be easy and it shouldn't get tangled. There we go. And then you just need to thread your needle. So thread your needle and then tie a knot in one end. Don't, as some people sometimes do, tie kind of a knot with both of the ends of the thread, making your thread 
double the thickness. Don't do that. Just tie a knot in one end and leave like a 10 centimeter tail here. So we're gonna start with the back stitch. So we tell you to start with the bird in the instructions and there are gonna be some, lots of little stitches, just very normal back stitches. So you start by completing one stitch and then coming up again in front of that stitch about the same length of the stitch away and then going back on yourself down the hole of the previous stitch so you're connecting those two stitches up and going back on yourself hence the name back stitch so most of the bird is stitched with back stitch but there are some stitches that are single stitches so it's the same technique in that you're just bringing the thread up through the fabric and back down again in a very simple stitch but you're not going back on yourself you're just doing a single stitch and so you can see that the single stitches that i've done are where the line is a little bit longer you can just do one single stitch and here I mean, you could, you could choose to do these like little sections of back stitch, that would be totally fine. But so here I've done little sections of back stitch, but you could equally just do one stitch for the beak. It just depends, it just looks different, doesn't it? So, yeah, some of these are single stitches. These little V shaped stitches are single stitches, but lots of it is back stitch. So, I'll do these little v-shaped ones oh sorry i bashed my camera So just carry on completing your bird and then most of the rest of the kit is also backstitch not most probably about half so these little birds they're backstitch and some single stitch the leaves are backstitch where we've got the lazy daisy stitch and i'm going to come show you that now is these are all lazy daisy stitches and then the middle of the flowers a lazy daisy stitches as well and I haven't put them on here but you've got the option to put some French knots in the middle here as well which I will show you as well at the end of the tutorial so let's get this back into focus I'm going to show you what you would normally do is fill in these lines with back stitch before you went on to do the lazy daisy stitch but I'm going to start by showing you the lazy daisy stitch just because I want to get to that and show you that because I think a few of you might be on that part already. Okay, so Lazy Daisy Stitch is fun. It's very satisfying. So it's also called Detached Chain Stitch, which I think is what it's referred to in the tutorial in case that's confusing you. So I've come up through the fabric. I'm gonna go back down that same hole and I'm gonna leave myself a little loop and I'm going to, before that loop goes all the way down, I'm going to come up at the end of the line. I'm going to pull that loop tight and then I'm going to secure it with a tiny little stitch at the top. And that is your first Lazy Daisy stitch. So I'm going to go down and show you that again. So I think the reason it's called Lazy Daisy is it's a really good way of stitching flowers, daisy-like flowers. And you can see that if you did this technique around a center point, 
you'd get a really lovely little flower which is what we're going to do when we get to our flowers but I'm just going to show it you like this so pull it tight and then secure it with your little top stitch and then keep going like that down the line down the same hole and then go down the hole. So that is Lazy Daisy Stitch. I hope that explains it well enough for you. I'm using an embroidery stand, which does make it a little bit easier having both hands free to be able to pull the loop tight, keep it out of the way. And you're Went down one hole then. But it's perfectly doable without a stand also. Okay, so that is the basket version, the kind of single stitches for Lazy Daisy. And I'm going to show you one of the little flowers as well, just because that's same technique but you'll just be able to see how it works up on those flowers so we've got these lines here that are marked for our lazy daisy so I'm coming up I've got three strands again coming up through the fabric and then going back down the same hole coming up at the end of the line through the loop and then securing it with your top stitch. So now I'm just going to show you how to do some French knots if you want to in the middle of these little lazy daisy stitch flowers so you bring your thread up and then you're holding this kind of last five percent five centimeters of the thread that's not five centimeters is it that's like two two centimeters of thread then you place your needle on top of that thread and then you going forward you wrap it round I'm going to go around twice then we're, while I'm holding that tight I'm going back down the same hole and pulling the thread through to make a little knot. So one French knot looks quite cute there. I'm going to do another one just to show you the technique. So you pull your thread, hold the last two centimetres, place your needle on the top, then wrap round twice, go back down through the hole, pulling it tight the whole time. So you can do, the amount of times you wrap your thread around is how big the French knot's going to be basically. So that's, you can go around three times, you can go around once, We'll do one more. There we go. So that covers all the stitches that we're using in this kit. So you're doing lots of this back stitch and single stitch around the flowers and the leaves, and then we've gone through the lazy daisy or the detached chain stitch for this and the inside of the flowers i'm just going to show you now then how to finish off your hoop once you have finished all the stitching so don't look at the mess on the back of my hoop but once you've finished all the stitching you need to just cut a border now i've cut this too small because we were originally going to use a smaller hoop so don't cut it that small because then the cardboard can't kind of grip it so you want a border of about two centimeters so trim your fabric and then trim the wadding to the size of this cardboard circle that we've given you and then the wadding goes in the back of the hoop and then the fabric goes on top of it and that will just push in
and give you a lovely finish. Obviously, you'll have finished yours, but give you a lovely finish to your hoop. So that's all the stitches you need to know for this kit, um, for this project. There are, like I said, some extra projects in the booklet that I'm gonna go through and do more tutor tutorials on over the next three months, hopefully over the next few weeks. Um, but let me know if you have any questions or if you want to see me do any of that again. And I hope you enjoy the project.